Welcome to Just a Minute. <laughs> My name is Nicholas Parsons, and as the minute falls, fades away, it's my huge pleasure to welcome you to this special edition of Just a Minute from the BBC Television Centre. This year marks the 45th anniversary of Just a Minute, and to celebrate over four and a half decades of radio success, they finally decided to let us deviate our way onto your television screens. <laughs> so, without further ado, please welcome to the show the four talented performers who are going to join me. And they are seated on my right, Paul Merton and Sue Perkins, and seated on my left, Graham Norton and Phil Jupitus. Please welcome all four of them. <laughs> The rules are impossibly simple until you try to play the game, and then you find that they're possibly <laughs> simply impossible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. I, I didn't think it was as funny as that, but you can... <laughs> I will ask each player in a turn to speak on the subject that I give them, and they will try and do that without hesitation, repetition or deviation. At any time, one of the other three can challenge, and if I uphold that challenge, they gain a point. And if not, the person speaking gains a point and continues with the subject. Until the whistle goes, and that tells us that 60 seconds have elapsed. And by the way, they can repeat the subject on the card. Phil, would you take the first subject? The Bermuda Triangle. You have 60 seconds as usual, starting now. The Bermuda Triangle is an area of sea that has caused the disappearance of many travellers, be they in boats, ships, Trawlers, dinghies, <laughs> aeroplanes, balloons, schooners, dirigibles, <laughs> gliders, or other methods of transport. <laughs> its mysteries have puzzled travellers for a thousand... <laughs> Damn you! <laughs> Still on your travel. Yeah, but I repeat of travellers. Yes, there were travellers before, but what a lovely list he did there without pausing that. Sue, you have a correct challenge. You have 36 seconds. The Bermuda Triangle, and you start now. The Bermuda Triangle is not, as one might think, the special green one you get in the assortment chocolate box at Christmas, <laughs> although you can equally get lost in its charms. It is, as Phil has so perfectly described, an area of ocean mysterious, where those who venture far into its clutches disappear without trace. Some would say a conspiracy theory. I am not cognizant of such things. I imagine there's a tectonic plate that's shifted, stuff goes into it, but I never studied geology. Could it be something to do with the moon casting its... Yeah. Wow. So she was speaking to Whistle Wen, getting the next point, and she's taken the lead. She's ahead of everybody else. Graham, we'd like you to begin the next round. Yes. The subject... Oh, this is interesting. A new rule for just a minute. <laughs> Give it a second or two to think about that, and then talk on the subject. It, it for won't six... help. <laughs> <laughs> 60 seconds, starting now. A new rule for just a minute, which I think would be interesting and fun and perhaps move the game on to a new level, a sort of 21st century yee-haw extravaganza of entertainment on both the radio and, of course, here on television. Let me get to it. Sorry to keep you. <laughs> so, <laughs> I just think that... <laughs> First. It, uh, it was, it was, it was running out of steam, but also there was repetition of new. Yes, was you did it? say new. But that's was. on the card. A new rule. It oh. is on the card, you're right. I withdraw my challenge, yeah. Graham. Yeah. So, incorrect challenge. I'm a buffoon. And um, a new rule for just a minute is still with you, Graham, and you have 37 <laughs> seconds starting now. I couldn't be happier to have this subject <laughs> back. Let me tell you about a new rule uh, for... Sue Challenge again. Every piece of let me tell you. <laughs> yes, let me tell you. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, she said it before. Let me oh, tell well, you. Oh, well, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Sue, a correct challenge. A new rule for just a minute. 33 seconds, starting now. I think that every time a panellist hesitates, deviates or repeats, Nicholas should remove an item of clothing. That <laughs> would spice things up no end. <laughs> No. <laughs> I understand. 
<laughs> Paul, we liked your interruption and we gave you a bonus point for that, but what is your challenge within the rules of just a minute? I think something had to, I had to be stopped. Uh, <laughs> I, did, I have no challenge. Have no challenge. Well, you've got your bonus point because they enjoyed your interruption, mm. but Sue was interrupted, yes. so she keeps the subject. A new rule for just a minute, and there are 24 seconds starting now. Come on now, who here wouldn't enjoy the sight of Nicholas loosening That's his tie? <laughs> no. <laughs> Repetition of Nicholas. Mm. Yes, that's right. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> very good. Very good. Very good, very good. You've played the game before, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> right, so, Paul, you've got in on this subject with 22 seconds to go. A new rule for just a minute, starting now. Every contestant has to speak backwards. Idea, terrible, A, what? That would be how it would work. <laughs> but you see, it's actually very difficult to even play the game by the normal rules of deviation, hesitation, repetition. What point would there be if you said you could no longer use vowels or consonants consecutively one after the other? It would be madness! <laughs> So Paul Merton was then speaking as a whistle went, gained that extra point for doing so, and he's now moved forward, and Sue is out in the lead. Sue, it's actually your turn to begin. Ooh. <laughs> Unwanted presence. It's a good subject. Mm -hmm. 60 seconds, Sue, starting now. I've always found Anne Widdicombe to be an unwanted presence. <laughs> <laughs> However, I don't believe that's what's on the card. We are, of course, referring to the things you get on your birthday. Maybe it's a jumper, cardigan, a book, or, as I once received on my eighth birthday, an arch... Phil, you A couple of birthdays. Mm. Yes. <gasps> Your two birthdays. Right. Phil, well listened. You have a correct challenge. You have 45 seconds still. Unwanted presence. And you start now. A 78 record player was given to me by my mother and father one Christmas, which did not meet my audio needs one jot <laughs> that particular year. I stood looking down at it as it played the discs to my... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sue, challenge. Hesitation. I think we call that hesitation. Yes, Sue, another point to you. And 30 seconds still on unwanted presents starting now. The rule is keep the unwanted gift in a drawer, cupboard or box. Don't do as I did and immediately give it to a charity shop, whereupon this particular artefact was displayed in the window and the friend who'd given me the gift saw it and hell broke uh, out. Graham, challenge. Repetition of gift. Yes, you mentioned yes. the gift before. I did. So, Graham, well, listen, you've got him with 17 seconds on unwanted presents, and your time starts now. It was Christmas morning. Oh, I was excited. And I got up <laughs> and I ran downstairs because I'd asked for all sorts of things. What I got, ladies and gentlemen, I do not lie, it was a ginger haired ventriloquist dummy called Finnegan. <laughs> Thank you very much, Santa, for that. <laughs> So, Graham not only was speaking as a whistle when, but timed it so the payoff to his story came right on the whistle. Paul, it's your turn to begin. Oh, another delightful geographical question. The Angel of the North. Tell us something about that subject in this game, starting now. The Archangel Gabriel appeared in front of Mary and said, Hey, up, love, guess what? You're pregnant. It's going to be a great Christmas. <laughs> is your father. He's going to be the son of God. It's going to be great. Yeah, fantastic. And that would be my impression of the Angel of the North. Of course, there is also a magnificent sculpture made by Anthony Gormley, I believe, the sculptor. And it's there. It... Uh, sculpture and sculptor. I yes, think that's right. Oh. No challenge. So, an incorrect challenge, Paul. You keep the subject, the Angel of the North, 40 seconds, starting now. As I stared into the mouth of the ravenous beast, I could see in the background an angel magnetically pointing north. This was the golden dream of my childhood, to have an angel looking after me and saying, I am your keepsake, your partner through life. Do not think of me as a superstitious, ethereal creature. Is there a nurse in the building? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, did I go again? Yeah, you went again. You missed. I missed. I didn't start talking about the angel yeah, game. Yeah, you oh, did. No. <laughs> so what was your challenge within the rules of just a minute? Yeah. Uh, I think de deviation from, from sanity. <laughs> oh, you can be as insane as you like oh, in just right. a minute. Yeah, As exactly. long as you keep going. 
So, Paul, an incorrect challenge. Another point to you. You still have the subject. The Angel of the North. 17 seconds, starting now. If you look at a map of the London Underground, you'll see that the Angel Station is on the Northern Line, and, indeed, it is not far away from that other magnificent... Oh, I don't know what to say. Still challenge. Uh, hesitation. Yes. And we call that hesitation. Sue, nine seconds are still available. The Angel of the North, starting now. Gateshead's proud guardian sits with huge great wings and took a million <coughs> pounds... Full challenge. The Angel stands, doesn't sit. Oh. Yeah, yeah, no, it does. Yeah, it's going, yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> There's another Angel of the South is one that squats, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, you had a correct chance. <laughs> you have another point, of course. The Angel of the North, five seconds are starting now. Sitting atop the hill. Ow, I did it! <laughs> So we give uh, Phil a bonus point for overacting. <laughs> so you have a correct challenge. Thank you. And you've cleverly got in with three seconds to go. Oh. You haven't won any friends, but you've got the subject. No. <laughs> Tough game. And the Angel of the North <laughs> with you, Sue, starting now. Those arms stretched bend <laughs> to the... Uh, poor challenge. Did we not have arms before? Yes. Like I said, they're not arms. Well, they're sort of arms. <laughs> they're wings. <laughs> They Big, are wings. flappy angel wings. <laughs> so, Paul, correct challenge. Five seconds to go on... No! <laughs> One second to go. <laughs> and you have the Angel of the North starting now. Angel of the North, how wonderful you are! <laughs> So, at the end of that round, Sue Perkins is in the lead and the other three are following with one point separating them and Sue, we're back with you to begin. And the subject is... My idea for Dragon's Den. I don't know whether you have a serious one or not, but it doesn't matter. Talk on it in this game, starting now. I have patented Bark Be Gone, the special mouth silencer for irritating dogs. If you have a terrier... Dachshund, Spinoni, Labrador, Spitz, anything that really has a vocal aspect to it. Simply put on the vocal alteration system. Phil. A couple of vocals. A couple yeah. of vocals, yes. Yeah. So, Phil, well, listen, you have the subject. My idea for Dragon's Den, 40 seconds starting now. My idea for Dragon's Den is once I've received my instructions from the Trollmaster, is to approach the den very, very stealthily. Oh. Oh. Graham, you spotted it first. Two varies. Two varies. <laughs> it's one of the tricks of just a minute, which they can easily fall into. But Graham, you picked it up first, and you have 33 seconds to tell us something about my idea for Dragon's Den starting now. My idea for Dragon's Den is just to shut it down. I find it quite irritating, <laughs> sitting there smug with their money on a table. I don't think it's appropriate, but look at this, they're loving it. They hate this show. <laughs> I thought it was a hit, but no, they loathe it with a passion. Am I still speaking? Uh, so, uh... <laughs> no, Paul has challenged you, but you were going so well the audience didn't hear it. Well, there was a hesitation then. There was a hesitation yes, in the I, middle I, of it, yes. Stop. So, Paul, you have the subject, my idea for Dragon's Den. 15 seconds available, starting now. I do watch the programme. Hillary's the new dragon in the den. I like it, love, but I don't think I can invest. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely charming the way that these entrepreneurs address these people who have come in with magnificent inventions, or so they think, perhaps a lifelong dream. <laughs> so Paul Martin was then speaking as a whistle when gained that extra point, and he's moved forward. He's now equal with Sue Perkins in the lead, closely followed by Graham Norton, one point behind, and then two or three behind him, Phil Jupiter. It's very close. It's very exciting, and you couldn't care less, could you? <laughs> <laughs> Graham, it's your turn to begin. Name-dropping, that's a good subject. 60 seconds, as usual, starting now. Name-dropping is rather gauche and rude, I feel. As I was saying to Madonna only the other day, <laughs> while we were chatting at Rihanna's house, who does put on a nice spread. I was surprised. She doesn't look like she eats, but, oh, oh her piles God. of food. Now, the <laughs> big thing about... Phil, new challenge. A bit of a hesitation. Oh, well, that? hesitation. <laughs> There's a lot of now. Mm, ooh, well, duh. Yeah. Ah, ooh. Ah, ah. 
Ooh, Phil, ah. all words. <laughs> Phil, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. Oh, if I can redress the balance later on, I will do so. But you have the benefit of the doubt. You have an incorrect challenge. You have name-dropping. 41 seconds, starting now. I do know someone who does a lot of name-dropping, and I've just realised I can't describe it without repetition. Sue, because... <laughs> <laughs> challenge. Predictive repetition. <laughs> <laughs> He said he's going to repeat it. Psychic challenge. Yeah. No. Well, not that psychic. I said I was going to do it. <laughs> so, an incorrect challenge. Graham, you've still got the subject. Name dropping. <laughs> 55 seconds starting now. So, for instance, they would say, Sarah, Jessica Parker, went up to Carrie Fisher. <laughs> <laughs> Sue, you've gone in. He's not hesitating. That yes, was definitely hesitation. Right. 25 seconds available for you. Sue, on name dropping starting now. When I met Rihanna, she was furious that Graham had to slightly despised her snacks because... Uh, right, little okay. challenge. Dislightly despised. A little bit of a She's stumbling. got a speech impediment too, and she <laughs> will be furious. <laughs> Hell hath no fury no, like a woman with a speech impediment. style. <laughs> I tell you what I'm going to do. I said, if I got a chance to redress the balance and give you the benefit of the doubt, I'm giving it to you now, Phil. Jupiter. You are nothing if not steeped in justice, Nicholas Parsons. <laughs> no, just fair justice, not stinking justice. No, steeped. 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 Oh, steeped. 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 <laughs> steeped, Nicholas. Uh, As if I would address you like some common Mexican bandido, Nicholas. <laughs> I don't need your stinking justice. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm not a bandido. You have the subject, <laughs> Phil. Name dropping, 20 seconds, starting now. Name dropping is something which people do in order to make themselves look big to people they meet in the street. Uh, Sue Challenge. Repetition of people. Yes, yes. People. people do yes. in order to make them see people they meet in the street. <laughs> Sue, well listened. And you have 15 seconds still. Name dropping, starting now. If you feel shy, awkward or insecure, it sometimes beholds you to mention the name of somebody socially more powerful or important. I've done this a few times and yet, in truth, I don't really know anybody sufficiently grandiose to drop with any degree of certainty. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel bad. <laughs> I just don't know him well enough. <laughs> oh, Not yeah. until the after show party. <laughs> what is your challenge? Oh, that uh, like, uh, <laughs> de de <laughs> deviation from the reality of uh, knowing you. You open doors, Nicholas. Yes. He, he's a doorman at the local. You do, the <laughs> <laughs> you do open doors. Yeah. The one's marked exit. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Graham, you got him with one second to go. Oh. <laughs> so, 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 laughing, 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 that... Oh, no, oh, really, you're giving oh. it to him. <laughs> uh, Name-dropping starting now. Name-dropping. Yes, I've got the subject back. <laughs> so, Graham... <laughs> and Graham was speaking as a whistle when you gained the extra point, Graham. And you have moved... And you are now in the lead. Oh. <laughs> yes. Uh, Paul, we'd like you to begin the next round. The subject is... 1967. Now, I think the reason they've chosen this subject is that is the year in which Just a Minute began on radio. 45 years ago, exactly. Didn't get any reaction at all. <laughs> but anyway, that is the subject. 1967, Paul. 60 seconds, starting now. 1967 <laughs> was a very big year in culture. We had the Beatles, Sergeant Pepper's, Lonely Hearts Club Band. <laughs> so, a bit of hesitation. A bit of hesitation, yeah, yes, absolutely. Sue. Yep. You have uh, 54 seconds. <clears throat> uh, 1967, starting now. 1967 was the summer of love, and one of the products of that psychedelic free-for-all was the panel show Just a Minute, where hippies <laughs> would sit around with their bongs and bell-end flares, and they would... <laughs> <laughs> What was your challenge? I've, I've had lots of pairs of trousers in my life, Nicholas. 
Some of them very comfortable. <laughs> Let me see if I agree with you. What was it, then? <laughs> she said bell-end flares. <laughs> so, Phil. Yes. Correct challenge. You have another point. And the subject is still 1967. <laughs> and your time starts now. In 1967, I lived in the middle of Essex in a beautiful cottage where, for my fifth birthday, I received a small motorboat which I used to play with in our pond. I watched it going round and round the surface. <laughs> oh. Oh. Suck. <laughs> <laughs> right, so Paul, you spotted it first. Yes, round and round. Round and so round, exactly. yes. The subject is back with you because you began with it, and it's still 1967 and 27 seconds are starting now. Patrick McGowan produced the television series The Prisoner, which people still debate the various meanings of it even today. 1967 was a magnificent year in music. Not only did we have. <laughs> <laughs> Sergeant Pepper's lonely <laughs> night. <laughs> Sue! Uh, hesitation, A real yes. hesitation, Absolutely. yes. 17 seconds, Sue. Tell us something about 1967, starting now. My parents were in a flat in Peckham, not enjoying some of the high fandango jinx that one might think of when you think... Goodbye. Hesitation, Mr Parsons, yes. sir. <laughs> I don't think she hesitated. She might have deviated with the high fandango jinx. Uh... Then I'm out. <laughs> Got nothing. <laughs> All right, you're training a little. Oh Come no, in. no, no! Don't oh, patronise no, no. me <laughs> <Not> on television. <laughs> I never patronise. <laughs> I just give out love and warmth to my players and my guests. <laughs> Always. No. So Phil, we will love hearing from you. 1967, yes, yes. nine seconds, starting now. It was a wonderful year where I would gamble around the garden with my dog and rabbit and look at them as they would frolic to and fro in the grass. Then, behind the bushes, I would... <laughs> 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 So, Phil Jupiter says when speaking as the whistle went, gained that extra point. He's creeping up on Paul Merton, who's one ahead of him. Oh, tea time. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mark the actual official beginning of the seance? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when do we start holding hands and try yeah. and contact the living? <laughs> uh, so that means that we only have time for one more round. So I need oh. to... Oh, you are lovely. We four or five of you are. And um, <laughs> let me therefore give you the situation as we go into the final round. Uh, Phil Jupitus, who's doing extremely well, he is just in fourth place, so... <laughs> He's only one point behind Paul Merton, then is Graham Norton, and just one point ahead of Graham, he's still in the lead, is Sue Perkins. <laughs> and, Phil, it's your turn to begin. The subject is The Eternal Optimist. 60 seconds. <laughs> Shall we challenge now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I almost like giving you a bonus point for acting. <laughs> so, 60 seconds starting now. The eternal optimist would think that in this point of the game, just a minute, he was going to surge suddenly and capture it from his other team players. But sadly, I know that this will not happen. The eternal optimist is someone who would say, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Or perhaps another beverage might be possible to make with that fruit. But no, there's just the one. In addition to the aforementioned fruit, you need water. Oh, yes, so you tell me. A repetition of fruit. You had more fruit than you should have had. <laughs> and still you listened well, you got in first. 33 seconds starting now. Usually my glass is three quarters empty, but for this round I shall make an exception and believe that it's possible for a great man of comedy in letters such as Phil Jupiter's to buzz in when I leave this pause and gain the points he needs to come first. <laughs> <laughs> Challenge. Oh. <laughs> I thought Phil would be too slow. 
<laughs> and I challenge on Phil's behalf. <laughs> hesitation. It was Is hesitation, right, Phil? definitely. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but you're only yeah. one point ahead of him, so it's neck and neck. I think you yeah. should take your challenge, which is legitimate, mm. and you have the eternal <laughs> optimist. <laughs> 20 seconds, Paul, starting now. I suppose being an eternal optimist is better than being an eternal pessimist. Looking at the situation and thinking maybe there is a brighter side, the other side of the... Oh, sorry. Oh, yes. Oh. Yes. Sue, Couple of sides. Couple of sides. Couple of sides, yes. Couple of sides. Yes. Yes. And, Sue, you have 11 seconds left on the eternal optimist, starting now. I still believe if I leave sufficient pause, <laughs> Phil... Uh. <laughs> Phil, you were really quick there. <laughs> did you challenge first? Oh, I challenged challenge? erroneously. I don't wish to take over hosting of the show, but she said, believe and leave. Two different leaves. <laughs> <laughs> and you had a correct challenge. Sue wanted you to come in. You did. You picked it up immediately. You've got the subject, the eternal optimist. Eight seconds starting now. I feel that if I keep talking about this subject of the eternal optimist, the points will be mine. If only I can maintain this breakneck pace of talking, then surely it will be... Uh, oh. Oh. Oh, I'm yourself. sorry, I'll withdraw my challenge. <laughs> I believe you me, I'm as disappointed as you are. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking, I saw the thing there. <laughs> so, what is your... talking. Yes, it did say talking. Yeah. Otherwise, you... I wouldn't have pressed the buzzer. <laughs> and you got him with half a second to go. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, I take that as praise. <laughs> <laughs> but those are the rules of the game. <laughs> Were you disappointed during the 1966 World Cup final when Jeff Hurst scored with three seconds to go? Oh, well, no, that's not fair. He doesn't give the Germans a chance. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of game is this? <laughs> <laughs> So, Paul, you have half a second yes. on the Eternal Optimist, starting now. I give it a fill! <laughs> Paul Madden speaking as a whistle when gained that extra point, and therefore we have brought the show to a close. Let me give you the final score, because I did say this would be the last round. Phil Dupitus, who gave incredible value. We love having him on the show. He did finish in fourth place, but it was a very good fourth place. <laughs> <laughs> a very strong fourth place. <laughs> And he was only two points behind Graham Norton, who was in a brilliant third place. Yeah. <laughs> and she... I could have been a contender. <laughs> and he was only one point behind Paul Merton, who was in a magnificent second place. And so the winner of today's show is Sue Perkins! <laughs> edition of Just a Minute and we want to be with us the next time we play this amazing game. Until then, from me, Nicholas Parsons, and of course from our talented guests, Paul Merton, Sue Perkins, Graham Norton and Phil Jupitus. Goodbye. Hope you'll be with us the next time we all get together and play Just a Minute! And that's tomorrow at six here on BBC Two. More now, though, on Radio 4. Just a Minute is a huge hit in India, so Nicholas Parsons presents the first of two special programmes recorded in Mumbai now. Or stay with us for Eggheads in their new time slot of 6.30. A team from Kent take a crack at them next. <laughs>